All around the world, people use internet to access information. According to Stats Canada, over 75% of Canadians use internet at least once a day. While surfing through the World Wide Web, we are constantly bombarded with thousands of websites, videos, papers, news articles, and lectures that use scientific knowledge as a basis for fact. Some of these sources do provide reliable health information. Some do not. Some are current while some are old. Deciding which sources of information to trust has become an important factor in our daily lives. So how do we critically decide which information to trust and which to disregard? Imagine that you are watching a video on YouTube. The video states that people only use 10% of their brains. You've heard this before from a friend, so you think it's true. The same video also states that drinking coffee reduces your risk for diabetes. You decide that this sounds like a lie. The first thing you should watch out for is trusting or not trusting information based on its first impressions. Users make up their minds on the credibility of a site in the first 50 milliseconds of a second of looking at the website. Next thing you should think about is the creator or author of the content. Is there a specific author listed? What qualifications do they have? Can you find other articles by the author? You need to be cautious as an academic qualification does not always indicate knowledge in the topic. The author may list themselves as Dr. Thomas, PhD, but you can gain qualifications in many diverse subjects and a PhD in road construction, for example, may not be the soundest background for an article on diabetes. In the case of your YouTube video, there is only a YouTube ID and so you send a message to the YouTube account to ask for their credentials. Next, you should check out the date of publication. The information may have been correct in the past, but it may be outdated by now. Also, check the dates of any scientific paper or experiments referenced. In the case of your YouTube video, you see that the video was posted last year. However, you are not sure if the research they are citing is still current. After looking at superficial parts of the video, you have to look into the aim of the content. Are there any biases involved? It could have been written from a bitter researcher or someone who has strong opinions on the subject. Does this document reside on the web server of an organization that has a clear stake in the issue at hand? What are the hard facts? In the case of your YouTube video, it turns out that the creator is an employer of a pharmaceutical company that sells drugs for diabetes. This could bias them towards reporting false information on coffee and diabetes. Last but not least, you have to question the actual content. Is the information accurate? You can compare the facts listed with multiple sources. After researching into the topic of your YouTube video, you find out that using 10% of your brain is an urban legend that has been misinterpreted ever since the 1900s. The early researchers said that they didn't know what 90% of the brain did. According to research, it turns out that we use virtually every part of our brain and 10% is the portion that we are using at a particular time. After further researching, you find that drinking coffee does actually decrease your chances of getting diabetes. An abundance of studies have demonstrated a correlation between an increased coffee consumption and a reduced risk of type 2 diabetes. Several articles with a similar headline referenced a cohort study published in The Lancet in 2002 which revealed that people who drink 3-4 to four cups of coffee per day have a 25% lower risk of developing type 2 diabetes. And this risk was lowered at 50% for people who drink at least 7 cups per day. These steps are just some tools for you to start questioning the information you see online. Even as you are watching this video, if you are questioning the validity of it, you are on the right track. Be sure to stay critical of any information you encounter online. If you want more information on the internet, safety, and regulations, please refer to these sites. Be sure to check out the other videos on our Demystifying Medicine channel. Also, you can subscribe and follow our Twitter feed. Thank you.